So last week, some of my viewers told me on a live stream that you can buy these small lithium iron phosphate batteries on Amazon, and it is the cheapest deal around, and they were not kidding. You get 204 watt hours for only $54. And to give you an idea of how cheap that is, if you were to make a 100 amp hour battery 12 volt by putting a lot of these in parallel, it would only cost $337. Here in the United States, they range from 600 to 1000 and sometimes even $1,300 for a 100 amp hour battery. Of course, this is not the most logical way to build a system, but it, I think it is the cheapest. This is just as cheap as buying these cells on AliExpress. So yeah, let's try them out and see what happens. So first we're gonna try to charge this battery with a power supply and it's actually charging at 10 amps. So this battery should be charged in less than two hours. And while this one's charging, let's try to open up this one. By the way, I have no affiliation with this company at all. I bought these with my own money. And look at that, the current is starting to drop on the battery that we're charging. That's cool, so it might be almost full. All right guys, check out this glue job. This is not the highest quality pack on the planet, but for the price, it's still impressive. So we have eight cells in parallel and four of those in series. And we have random balance leads everywhere, but I'm not seeing a temperature sensor on this unit. And this stuff smells really bad. This was in those cheap AliExpress batteries that we ordered like a year ago. Look at the craftsmanship of the nickel strip being soldered to the PCB. That is not what you want to see. I guess it will work, but yeah, that's not good. And it had just pieces of tape protecting it from these wires. So don't use this for a high vibration environment. And something that's different with this BMS setup is that the positive and the negative are connected to the BMS. And then you have a positive and negative that come out of the BMS and that goes to the terminals. Usually the BMS controls the current that flows through the negative terminal. And then you have a balance lead. But on this battery, instead of having a balance cable, it has one wire here, second wire right here, third wire right here, and the fourth cell positive is this one right here. But this does seem like a good size BMS considering the size of battery, so that's cool. Oh, and our battery stopped charging. And now this battery is fully charged and we hit high voltage disconnect. So we're gonna do a capacity test. And now the battery is connected to a CBA4 that's connected to the shop computer. So this was a 0.2C test and we only pulled 14.9 amp hours. That is just shy of the rated capacity, so it failed. Just to ensure I got accurate results, we're gonna test another one of these batteries. I fully charged this one and we're gonna hook it up and do the exact same test over again. Now the test has begun, so I'll come back in five hours and see if these results match the last test results. So while I'm waiting for the capacity test results to come in, I checked the voltages of the cells on the exposed pack that we took apart. And the first cell pack has 3.8 volts, second pack is 3.8, third is 3.7, and the fourth pack is 3.8 volts. And that's not very common. Most lithium iron phosphate BMS's high voltage disconnect threshold is 3.65 volts. 3.8 volts is a bit high, and I don't think these would last very long. So the test is almost done, and I don't think it's gonna pass. It's not doing very well. We're only 12.9 amp hours, and the voltage is dropping. That's a bad sign. We only pulled 83% of its rated capacity. That is a failure. This one has a really smooth curve too, so I don't think there was anything wrong with my test equipment. We started at 14 volts, we ended at zero. So, so far, these batteries have failed every test that we have thrown at them. Both of these have failed the capacity test. This one has two cell packs that are overcharged, and I haven't done anything with this one yet. So for this pack, we're gonna do a dead short test and see if the BMS can handle it, and if there's a protection safety feature installed. And this battery is fully charged. And for this test, I do not want my viewers ever attempting this at home. This is dangerous. This is not a good idea. All right, here we go. Woo! Oh, good. It actually worked. So the BMS's short circuit protection does work. That's good. So that's actually a relief, but I would not trust this battery's BMS. I would add a fuse if I were to buy these. So we did not pull full capacity. They overcharged the cells. You do not have good quality of craftsmanship inside, 
but these are still very, very cheap and I'm sure someone's gonna still use them. So if you guys plan to use these, you need to add an inline fuse to every single pack that you put into parallel. I would not put these into series ever, absolutely not. And I noticed on the cells it says 6.4 watt hours. If you multiply that by eight and then by four, you'll get 204.8 watt hours. And that's what it says on the label, but I do not expect these to ever pull full capacity. Both of my tests showed that they couldn't and the temperature of the cell was pretty high. I just got done charging it. I waited till high voltage disconnect and two of the packs were overcharged and we did a 0.2C rate. So yeah, these are just bad cells. So I would expect 12 to 14 amp hours to be more accurate. And I was planning to build a micro solar power system and test it with these battery packs, but I have lost motivation. I don't want anybody to buy these, but it is still very cheap. And for some extremely small systems, it might actually work. I would manually set the absorption as well so it doesn't overcharge the cell packs. And that's pretty much it for these batteries. I hope you guys liked the video. Let me know below if you disagree with anything that I said in this video, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.